Angus pilots have voted by a huge margin for industrial action, which could put the holiday plans of tens of thousands of passengers at risk. Members of the Irish Airline Pilots Association, Atter Lingus, returned a 98% vote in favour of the action. There will be seven days' notice given before any strike action would get underway. Well, for more on this, I am joined by travel journalist Owen Corrie. Owen, you're very welcome to the programme. So we are about to come into peak holiday season, end of June, July and August. And that threat of strike action, I think, really does worry anybody lucky enough to hope to be going abroad over the next couple of months. Should they be concerned? Yes, this is when you do hold a strike, Kira. Uh, peak summer, July, the last week in July will be the, uh, re the busiest time of the summer. And we are going to have about 40,000 Aer Lingus passengers a day going through Dublin through July and August. I think that's a lot to do with the speed and the choreography of what's happened so far. My instinct is there will not be a strike, but I think we're going to have a lot of scare, a lot of sabre rattling, and we'd probably go right to the wire uh, before they reach agreement on this. Because IELPA, who are obviously representing these pilots and Aer Lingus, are locked in these negotiations, aren't they? And those negotiations are ongoing this evening, but as you say, with this threatened uh, strike action in the background. So is that what they're doing, do you think? Is this all about sort of turning the screw a little bit? Because in fairness, there is a huge gap between them, isn't there? very big gap and what's interesting is the difference between the pilot union and other unions all the other Aer Lingus unions have signed up uh, the demand was quite high 23 percent um, the offer uh, that came from Aer Lingus was then met by the Labour Court who came as the Labour Court tends to do uh, came somewhere in between the two and recommended nine percent that was uh, accepted by Aer Lingus and rejected by the pilots. Right across Europe, uh, Kira, post-pandemic, we've had uh, pilot unions saying, we gave up an awful lot during the pandemic, we didn't get back the sacrifice, we didn't get any acknowledgement. Uh, St Scandinavia and SAS had a series of pilot strikes which really damaged the airline and is if we put uh, SAS on the brink of being taken over by Air France. Uh, we also saw Lufthansa and um, other countries, pilot union striking. I think what we what we saw in this and was a little bit surprising was the speed at which it went through all the hurdles that were put in place to avoid a strike. There's a pilot pay tribunal recommended in December. We went then went to the workers, uh, the WRC, and that uh, the pilots union rejected almost out of hand straight away and straight to the Labour Court. Labour Court recommendation, they rejected that as well. It's quite clear to me they want uh, to do something similar to what happened twice in the noughties, the last time in 2008, where you call a strike date, you do immense damage to the airline, and the forward bookings are affected, and then with a few hours to go, usually the night before, after an all-night session, you call off the strike. The difference now is that they're dealing with uh, an IAG, a four-airline group, who have already put a halt on Aer Lingus's growth plans by diverting two very important aircraft, the A321XLR. Aer Lingus was going to be the launch uh, airline for that. They're gone to Iberia as well. So I think we're going to get, see a little bit more hard line on the management side than we did when IALPA last confronted Aer Lingus. OK, and what is interesting is Aer Lingus, by all accounts, have tried to set aside or trying to negotiate these what they call wet lease aircraft, I suppose other aircraft that they can use. So if there was a strike action, and as we've said there, it could happen with seven days notice, so it could happen quite quickly, how would they be able to protect Irish holidaymakers? Just to explain to viewers, a wet lease uh, means that you get the crew, the aircraft, it's in somebody else's colours, you hire it in, you run the routes. That would normally be an option, there'd be a couple of southern hemisphere airlines without spare aircraft. There are the pilots know, and this is part of the negotiation, there are very, very few spare aircraft around this summer. The reason being Boeing deliveries have almost come to a halt. Very dramatic what's happened there. And a whole load of the Airbus, and Aer Lingus is an all Airbus airline, have already been grounded because of engine recalls. A lot of cards are in IALPA's hand, and that's what uh, they will do. And the, they will use all the strengths that they have at the, at the moment. Aer Lingus are saying that the people who are really going to be hurt by this 
this are not the pilots who will probably get a, a, a good increase at the end, maybe the 9% that the Labour Court recommended, but the cadets that are all supposed to be coming and the extra uh, pilots that were to be hired uh, for Aer Lingus so that they could be the launch customer of this exciting, very dramatic new aircraft, the new North America routes that Aer Lingus was planning, they're all going to be put on hold and we could see a sort of a, a, a Aer Lingus's finances put into the sort of tailspin that okay. the aviation industry doesn't need at the moment, Kira. Okay, all right. Look, thank you uh, for bringing us that update, uh, Owen. It is something always a pleasure.